Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. It is now time to replace this system, so let's go ahead and get started. So here's the current setup. It's all federal signal stuff, so I'm gonna be putting in a simplex uh, setup. Today. Here's the new stuff that's going in. All of this stuff is older conventional stuff. Technically, Simplex does manufacture pretty much every device on this table. 4903 series, contrary to what a lot of people think is still being manufactured. Um, obviously, these ones are used, but um, pretty much everything on this table you can still buy. So we're going to be putting this stuff in. The first step whenever I'm going from horns to speakers is remove the audible signal wires because right now it's connected to the NAC. So it's going to send out 24 volts, but these are speakers. So I have to connect these leads here to my speaker output, which is here. But um, in the meantime, before I connect anything, while I'm changing stuff out, I'm going to just not connect this to anything to prevent any damage. So let me go ahead and just start by removing the old devices. So, so these were a nightmare to wire because both the horn and strobe have four pigtails, but... It's pretty simple actually, I just use these Wago connectors. So all I have to do is just pull these out. Now technically I guess I could reuse this back box, but it's not really all that deep. So I would prefer to use a simplex box. I'm gonna replace this entire back box. Slide that out. Being really careful not to chafe the wires because the reason I don't use a bushing is the hole in the wall is pretty small. So all I really have to do is just make sure that none of this metal touches it. But while I'm pulling the box out, I don't want to scratch the insulation off. Here's the new box. This is a Simplex 4903 back box. So just tighten these screws down and make sure it's level. So the wiring for these is really simple. You see I have two pairs of wires. Um, black and red go to the strobe output and the yellow and green wires go to the audible output. Now, in this case, I actually had to modify this device. The strobe on this is a syncable strobe. All the devices I'm putting up today are syncable, um, so they're all, they're all gonna sync. And then this speaker was from a different device. So I just have these strobe leads and this speaker, but it's still the same thing. It'll work as intended. So once you're ready to put the device on the box, you have to make sure you slide these tabs under the device and you just kind of push it on and then send in your screws. There we go, one 4903 speaker strobe installed. Always a classic look to see. You can start removing the pull station, so I'm just gonna undo this screw right here. Once again, this pull station is wired with Wagos, so all I have to do is remove those tabs. Also, I'm gonna be installing a simplex specific back box just because it looks better. In this case, obviously this box would fit any simplex pull station, but just for the sake of appearance do that and then put in the new box. You can see here this is why I try and change devices out as in or change the boxes out as infrequently as possible because inevitably when you do that eventually it's gonna scratch up the wall a little bit. It's not really a big deal because the box covers that anyways but um, I try and plan tests out so I don't have to change the boxes between tests as frequently. Now I'm just fastening this pull station to the box. Since I haven't disabled the zone I have to hold the button in while I do this so the alarm doesn't sound. Now we can close that station. So this is a break glass station. Obviously it does not have a sheet of glass in it. This right here is the scary part because you don't want to break the glass. This is just a panel of glass. It's pretty thin. Um, you don't want to break it prematurely because it costs like, I think this particular one, it's like $10 to replace it. So there's this little plastic clip and then you snap it in there and very carefully lower that hammer. And now this pull station is all set. So you can see I'm replacing this other pole station here with a dual action variant of the Simplex T-Bar. Pretty nice, looks good on this box. Um, after I finished this pole station, I went ahead and started installing a white 4903 device. This particular unit was replaced with a Commander 1, but now it's getting replaced again. You can see I'm installing a extra deep white back box. This one is big enough to fit pretty much all the speakers. So the device on this side of the basement is the same speaker strobe, except it's white, again, syncable strobe. The back box for this is a 4x4. Technically, you're not supposed to use a 4x4 box, but I didn't have a white simplex back box. This is a 3-inch deep box, so it's slightly deeper than a standard 4x4, but um, it fits the speaker strobe perfectly, and it looks pretty nice. So this one's going to be a little more complicated to install because I am installing this wire guard attachment by simplex. So this is one of those annoying ones with the poor quality screw terminals, but um, it basically works the same. You just stick the cables in, put one lead of the 
end of line resistor in as well because this is the last device on the circuit. It's pretty simple, I guess. You just send in the screws through the cage. Once you do that, you can close the pull station and shut the cage. Right here, you can see I'm just feeding some wire from the normal box up to the box where the speaker is going to be mounted. As you can see, I'm doing them separately. So I'm installing a separate strobe and speaker up there because that's all I have right now, but they're both white, so they kind of match. So these strobes are infamous for being kind of difficult to install. You have to take the shell, mount that, and then you wire up the strobe module itself. And then once you do that, you have to tuck the wires into the box carefully. And then after that, all you have to do is just snap this strobe into the housing and it'll make a loud click and you'll know that you've done it right. So there we go, our speaker and strobe. So basically we have a speaker strobe, but obviously I didn't have a speaker strobe. These older devices are really quite hard to mount on the ceiling, but I went ahead and got that done. This is a strobe plate, so it's not one complete unit. It's actually a strobe plate with a speaker mounted on it, but it is a 4903 device. These units are installed. You can see I have a true alarm and then a speaker strobe. This is a 4903 strobe plate. You can see it is ceiling mounted. Removing this device here, again, it's all wagered up. I'm gonna replace this box with a single gang box because this strobe obviously is single gang. Just like the other strobe, once you're finished wiring it, you just kind of snap it into place and then it's good to go. Out here in the garage, I'm replacing this other federal signal pull station with a conventional simplex T-bar, nice and standard single action version. And up at the horn strobe, I'm actually reusing that uh, four by four box to install the speaker strobe in this case because this device is the last device on the circuit It is not that cramped in the junction box and I was able to fit the entire device onto the four by four box So the system is now officially done. You can see I have the pull station and speaker strobe installed in the garage Gone ahead and tied in my speaker circuits The last thing I have to do is go to the NAC selection and select wheel lock sync The reason I'm doing that is you might be thinking why are you doing that because there's clearly simplex devices. Um, the way these strobes work is when you disconnect power, the strobe will flash once, and wheel lock sync works very similarly where it kind of interrupts the power, um, so it causes these strobes to sync. It's not probably UL listed to do that, but this is kind of a demo system, so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.